Okay, well, um, Karen, should we get started? That seems like a great idea. It's great to see so many people here. We ready to kick it off? Great. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, I, I'm sitting here with this big smile on my face because it's just wonderful to see so many members of the Notre Dame family here. Um, my name is Karen DeHaze. I'm a graduate of the class of 1985 and proud mom of two Notre Dame women. Uh, and uh, so excited to see everybody here today. Um, I'm honored to serve as the chair of Notre Dame Women Connect this year and just thrilled tonight to welcome you to our first conversation with uh, a female leader from campus, uh, Coach Ivy. We're so happy to have her with us. Um, tonight, in addition to talking with Coach, we have the chance to also spotlight some of our leaders from Notre Dame Women Connect. They'll be asking questions of Coach Ivy that many of you have sent in. We're so grateful for your enthusiastic participation. And uh, before we finish up tonight, for those of you who are interested, we'll love to share details with you about many ways that you can get connected with Notre Dame Women Connect and um, learn more about the programs that we have to offer and a couple things that are just around the corner and to which all alumni, parents, and friends are welcome. Before we uh, do that, we're going to get to the uh, star of the show this evening, uh, Coach Ivy. And in order to do that, I'd love to introduce to you Ann Strickers. Anne is class of 96. She'll be uh, moderating our interview with the coach tonight. She's the assistant athletic director and varsity girls golf coach at St. Francis High School in Mountain View, California, and teaches in the theology department. Um, Anne was a four-year rower at Notre Dame. Uh, she encountered the Alliance for Catholic Education and is now grounded and tremendously successful in ministry and vocation education. Um, Anne is in her second year on the Notre Dame Women Connect board. Currently, she's serving as the Pacific Northwest Regional Director and also leading Notre Dame Women Connect service and spirituality efforts. Um, she has twice served as the president of the San Francisco Alumni Club and as co-chair of the Notre Dame Women Connect group for the past 10 years. Um, Anne is also, she's so accomplished, the author of Pray and Pla Practice with Purpose, a playbook for spiritual development of athletes and promotes Irish athletics through her blog. So Anne, welcome, and uh, we'll look forward to having you introduce Coach and lead us through the evening. Great. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, um, everyone, especially to our, our special guest, Coach Neil Ivey. Um, I'm gonna start with her bio, um, which a lot of which we'll be covering in our conversation together, but it's so wonderful in a time right now where we have so many struggles to be so inspired. Every day I just hope for some sort of inspiration and in preparing for our day um, to learn more about your life um, has been a real gift. So I'd like to share with um, this group a little bit about Coach. One of the finest point guards ever to wear a Notre Dame uniform, Neil Ivey is, was announced the fourth Karen and Kevin Keyes family head uh, family head women's basketball coach on April 22nd, 2020 just minutes after Muff McGraw stepped down from her post after a Hall of Fame career. Ivy was the common link to all nine of the program's final four appearances, two as a player and seven as an assistant coach, logging a combined 17 years on Notre Dame's campus. Ivy spent the 2019-2020 season honing her craft as an assistant coach with the Memphis Grizzlies before returning home. The Irish went 386 and 55, an 875 winning percentage during Ivy's time patrolling the sidelines as an assistant. Notre Dame's recent decade of dominance, 2010 to 2019, had her handprints all over it. No other program has produced more trips to the national title game, six, and the Irish posted the third most wins in that span as well. That decade also consisted of 14 conference championships, seven final fours, and a 2018 national championship. Ivy originally joined the Fighting Irish women's basketball coaching staff in May 2007. Prior to that, she spent five years in the WNBA. A native of St. Louis, she graduated from Notre Dame's College of Arts and Letters in 2000 with a bachelor's in history. She's the proud mom of Jaden, who started as a freshman at Purdue University. Neil is many things, coach, athlete, mom, daughter, sister, teammate, and friend. What better to have her as our inaugural guest of our Notre Dame Women Connect series. Thank you, coach. Thank and you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. In the non-virtual world, we'd have a standing ovation, right, coach? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So let's begin. It's interesting reading your bio. It actually inclu includes a pronunciation key for your first name. It spells it out, Ni L. Um, I can't think. I can't help but think of other coaches who have such unique names: Muffet, Digger, Phelps. Um, and then even in the game, right? Um, your name is beautiful. Is there a story behind it? Um, no, I have four older brothers, and my mom. She had, um, she met a really ins inspirational woman in St. Louis and she gave her multiple names for, for a girl because she, she told me she, you know, she always wanted a, a girl and she had four, four opportunities um, and end up getting, having boys. And so I finally came along and then she, so she found that name. Um, she, she didn't really tell me what it meant, but she gave me, my name is ne Niel Deirdre Jamila Vivica Ivy. So I have like three middle names. So I think that's kind of special because um, the lady that she met, she gave her so many, every time she was pregnant, she gave her a name. And so when, um, when I finally came, at the fifth child, she tagged all the names with it. So I always tell people that story because um, everyone always asks, like, why do you have so many middle names? It's because my mom really desperately wanted a, wanted a girl. So she finally, she, she, she finally got me after the fifth try. That's awesome. So your diploma at Notre Dame must hopefully includes all of them, all names on there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so tell us about your, your four older brothers. Um, they taught you the game. Um, tell us about them and your mom, your parents. Right, so from St. Louis, um, like I said, baby girl. I was a tomboy growing up. Had um, four older brothers and just kind of was the, I always kind of followed what they did. Um, we were all very active in sports. Um, my mom, dad worked really hard to, to send us to ca great Catholic schools. Um, so I had a great um, education growing up and went to a great um, grade school called Maculata in high school, um, all girl high school called Corazio Academy in St. Louis. And, you know, my love of sports basically, like I said, basically came from just being with, the, with my older brothers. They, they, we played every sport imaginable, just, just loved just being a part of a team, loved being, loved being active, um, very active young, um, you know, young girl growing up and, I fell in love with the game of basketball by following them. So I used to always, you know, go to their practices, go to their games. And uh, that's where the love of the game came from. Um, and then when I realized that it was something that could help me get to the next level, could help me um, get a scholarship to college, I think that's when my focus really became uh, more sharp um, about eighth grade freshman year when I realized there's an opportunity to utilize the sport to, um, to be able to continue my um, academic career in college. And then you know, obviously having that um, connection with Coach McGraw and giving the opportunity to get on the Notre Dame's radar really pretty much changed my life. Wow. Yeah, um, your high school, Coriezu in St. Louis, uh, you earned a, a high school state championship. Um, tell us about that experience, your teammates, um, what that was like. It was amazing because it was the first time that the Coriezu had ever been that far in the, um, in the state the ride to you know get to the state championship and that year we went 31 and 0 so we, we were undefeated it was a, a amazing year i felt like i had so much great support and my outside of coach mcgraw my biggest mentor basketball wise was my high school coach gary glasscock he really taught me the game you know really believed in me and i, I was the type of player that really i really fed off the confidence of my my coaches confidence of my teachers and my family and my parents and so i felt he really it felt like he really took me under his wing and just had an incredible high school, high school experience, high school career. And we won my junior year and then my senior year, I think we came in third place. So I had a really fantastic high school experience on both, on both sides, um, academically, um, athletically. I think I was just fortunate to be in a, an amazing, amazing high school and, and have an amazing, um, just people around me. I thought, I felt like Coriezu looking at Notre Dame was basically the continuation from the values that Coriezu, Coriezu instilled in me. Um, it was a faith, faith-based high school. Um, we were taught by the Sacred Heart Nuns. I just felt like it, it had the same faith and spirituality that um, I recognized it was on my visit at Notre Dame. And so it was just, a, just an amazing time. I was very, very blessed to say that I was a part of um, that, that high school. Oh. Well, working in a Catholic high school, I know we feel like we're blessed when we have people like you, right, who really speak to that mission and, um, and you know, in the fullest way. Thank you. Um, so many fans know that Arike Okumbawale loves Kobe Bryant. Um, I came to read that you are a Michael Jordan fan. 
uh, tell us, which is not hard to figure out, but tell us a little bit about your love for Michael Jordan and stories about that. Right. Yes, he was def definitely somebody I looked up to, um, just a big Chicago Bulls fan and um, big North Carolina um, men's basketball fan because of Jordan. I think it was just, you know, something that I saw on TV that just really inspired me. Um, you know, just the way he approached the game. You know, he's obviously one of the best of the greatest of all times. And so I just felt like I wanted to study his game into order, in order to bring it um, to my game. And so it's just somebody that I, I really looked up to growing up. And um, I really wanted to follow in his footsteps. I actually wanted to go to North Carolina. I wanted to be recruited by North Carolina because I just felt like I wanted to be a Tar Heel, be like, you know, be like Mike. That was, <laughs> that was something that um, growing up, that was really something that resonated with me as far as just, just his game. And, and so, so really loved um, the Bulls because of him. And, you know, somebody even right now, even now, I think during quarantine, I watched The Last Dance and just to kind of, to, to, to hear his story, the background of the, his dedication, um, his, his ability to, you know, to really dominate in his craft, um, to work on his craft and just the way that, um, that he inspired a lot, a lot of, um, you know, young fans and just the, the, way, the gift that he gave us through the game of basketball was really inspiring to me. Yeah. yeah, and what a gift that was during quarantine, right? To watch that series. That was amazing. <laughs> got so me he, through at least six, four weeks of quarantine. <laughs> four two. Uh, did you watch it with your son? You know what's interesting? Jaden wanted to watch, he didn't want to watch, he wanted to watch the entire series. So he didn't want to, you know, watch one Sunday and then have to wait. So he waited till all the way to the end and watched them in a row for the entire afternoon, which I thought was interesting. But yeah. Cause he was normally a, a big LeBron, a LeBron James fan. And so after that, you know, he was like, okay, I understand why Jordan is the greatest of all time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want people to know this. I read this, uh, it said that you used your own money to attend a basketball camp at UNC, but the head coach, Sylvia Hatchell only appeared at the opening and closing of the camp. and did not get a chance to see you play. Um, have you ever had a chance to meet her? First of all, I love that you <laughs> earned your own money. Maybe you babysat, or I think a lot of women on this men can relate to that as a, a young person. <laughs> yes, um, she was, and she came the first day and then left, and then you know came back the last the last day of camp. And so I was honestly devastated because I was I wanted to get on her radar. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to the camp and I'm gonna. I'm going to wow her with my talent and hopefully I get an opportunity when I leave, I'll get a, you know, get a look basically. I just wanted her to see me. And so, and it, it happens, you know, I, I feel bad even, you know, saying that story, but I mean, actually I learned from that experience that how important it is to be present in camp, at camp because there are young, young mm -hmm. campers that really are maybe there for the same reasons. Like I, I, I want coach McGraw to, to see me. I want coach Ivy to see me. So that was something that a lesson that I learned because I was honestly devastated by it. Um, but I had the opportunity, you know, I met her just during, um, yeah, as an assistant coach on the sidelines of recruiting and I never brought it up. But I did my senior, my fifth year, we played UNC for Coaches versus Cancer Classic game in Disney World, actually, I'll never forget. And so that was my opportunity to show her who I was. And so we won the game by, you know, 15, 20 points and I had a great game. So I felt, I felt vindicated, I guess, after that, I was like, okay. I felt, I felt better. Well, her loss was certainly our gain, right? Um, <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. So, you know, I, I felt like I, I, my Lord blessed me to, to have the opportunity to be at Notre Dame. So. Um, love this quote. It was in Notre Dame Magazine, the articles about Coach McGraw. She says, quote, the first time I saw Neil Ivy play, I'm pretty sure she was zero for 13 and I loved her. <laughs> what do you remember about meeting coach? I remember, I remember she was um, very nurturing. I, I felt like she felt, she, it felt like home to me by meeting her. I felt very comfortable with her. I felt like it, I could talk to her. Um, and I was very nervous talking to a lot of the coaches, um, a lot of assistant coaches and just going through the process, but I didn't feel that way with Coach McGraw and the noted her staff. And I felt extremely comfortable. So it was somebody that I, I just really, um, we just kind of developed a special bond right from the beginning. I, I trusted her very, very early in the process. And then when I came to campus, I just felt like, you know, this is, 
this is exactly where you you just have that feeling. I know a lot of people say that when they come to Notre Dame, sometimes you just get that feeling. Um, and I, I felt that here, but I felt like she was very intense, very smart, um, you know, very confident. And, you know, I felt like she was somebody that really could to, I thought she was somebody that could really help me grow to be a, to, to be a woman, not just, it wasn't just about basketball with her. I realized that she really took a lot of time to make sure that um, it was on and off the court, the, the experience that I would have. And it, again, like I said, a lot of, a lot of um, re, um, recruiting is really, um, is really about relationships. And I felt like she did a really great job of building that relationship with, with me. And then also um, ha- building that relationship with my, my, with my parents who were helping me make the decision. Wow. Um, you know, there are many faces of Coach McGraw, the very serious, the stern face, right? The calculated face. But uh, Coach, it's really, it's remarkable when she talks about you, she really lights up. Um, it is, it's, it's, it's quite noticeable, like her affection for you. Um, she said also, quote, I always felt a connection to her, but also like I wanted to look out for her. Uh, what does that mean to you? It means everything to me. She has always been somebody that has, um, you know, been in my corner I, it, it, during every aspect of my life. So all the highs and lows. So not a lot of people know that at my lowest point, she was the person that was there for me. Um, and I, I know I've mentioned this before, maybe at some of the speeches that I've had is, you know, I lost my brother when I was um, pregnant. I graduated um, and I was pregnant with my son and my, uh, my brother would drop me off at a, actually at a game downtown in St. Louis. And he was on his way to pick me back up. And um, there was a person that read, you know, ran a red light and um, killed him on the spot on his way to pick me up. And so my car was completely, you know, de- you know, devastated, didn't have a car. And so I came back to campus. It was something, it was, it was a part of my life that completely changed the trajectory of, of my life. And so I came back to Notre Dame and she gave me her car. This is just, I'm just going to give you one great story of coaching Ross. She gave me her car, her, her vehicle, cause she knew, you know, that my, my car was, um, you know, devastated. So just and that's just one that's just one story um i could tell you mil- millions of stories but that one it just shows that it's she's always been there for me through the the ups and downs through um every aspect of my life a lot i, I think a lot of people see um her being my biggest supporter and a moment like this of being in the head coach and the championships um and but she was there for me the birth of my child the 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 death of my brother like she was there for me for um, the lowest parts of my life. And so that just shows you what type of a woman she is and, and what she means to me. Um, she's more than just my coach and my mentor, my friend, like she's my family. And, um, and I've always had the connection with her from the moment that I met her. And so, you know, she means a lot to me. So when she lights up about me, I light up about her. And because, you know, she just has impacted my life more than anybody. You know, outside of my mother, she's the, the next person that has um, impacted me in the way, in the way that she has. And it, it's, it's just, it, she just, um, she's been a godsend to me. Thank you for sharing all that. Thank mm-hmm. you. Um, it was noted that Notre Dame's first women's basketball national championship in Notre Dame history was in 2001. I think there should be the correction. It's the first basketball championship in Notre Dame history. <laughs> Any second for that matter. Um, talk to us about the first one. So you're on this team, they're building a program. Like what are the factors that led to the 2001 win? Yeah, well, we had a um, very veteran um, team. So Ruth Riley was the best center, arguably the best center in the country that year. Alicia Retai, one of the best shooters in the country. Um, we had had, you know, great success up until, um, I mean, up, uh, like 96 with Beth Hunt Cunningham, Beth Morgan and Katrina Gaither, they, they helped bring us to our first Final Four in 96. And then we just slowly, you know, pretty much, you know, worked our way back, to, you know, to getting to the Final Four that year in 2001. But that year in particular was a year where we were, you know, senior dominated. We had a five or five seniors in that class. Um, we were just ready. And it, it was my last year. So I was, um, I had two ACLs in college, so I redshirted from my freshman year. And so it was my fifth year. And for me, I mean, I knew that this was my last opportunity to reach 
my goal. My goal was to to bring a national championship to to Notre Dame, and that was that was my final opportunity to do it. So we were we were focused, we were locked in, um, we were healthy. That was the biggest thing, and um, we just really we we built chemistry throughout the year, and gained more and more confidence, you know, throughout the season. And then January fifteenth was the first year that we beat UConn here in Notre Dame at a packed crowd, the first um, packed sold out crowd here, first time we'd ever um, beaten UConn. And so after that win, I think that pretty much, um, it, it drove us to the rest of the season because we knew what we wanted to do. We have the same goals every year, but that year just felt different. And I think it was because of the experience that we had and, um, you know, um, the, we were healthy. Like I said, we were, we was a healthy team and, you know, it, it just, it just seemed like it was, we just knew that was the year. Awesome. And then in the, in the championship game, um, to know that it's in your hometown of St. Louis, I mean, you can't even script it. Um, Coach Ivy had 21 points. You swiped five steals. Uh, yeah, you beat UConn in, in, in the semis only to beat Purdue. Uh, I mean, can you, can you talk about what that meant at, to win at home? Yes, it was the most incredible experience of my career. And I think the probably the second best experience was winning it as an assistant coach. But you know, that was, like I said, that was a dream for me. And I, I'd been through so much adversity. I, I didn't real, I didn't know if I was going to be able to come back from the first knee surgery. You know, that was the first time I had ever been hurt. And so that was very hard to have the game taken away. So I, I learned just to be grateful, you know, to, it gave me perspective when I was out my freshman year. And then to, to come back, bat, fight, fight to, to get healthy, to tear my ACL again, my junior year, you know, I was devastated. And so to be able to go home my fifth year, back in my hometown um, with, all, with all the injuries that I've been through in the past to be able to play in front of my family and friends and um, high school um, friends. It was just the, I, like you said, I, you couldn't even script that. I, I never would have thought, imagined that it could have been such a perfect experience for me, but um, everything went full circle for me um, to be able to come back you know, to, my, to my hometown and play, play at home, but it was the best experience and um, just just a moment that I'll, I'll never forget. Just that I can I, I could always go back to remember the hotel and what happened that day, and just that the whole moment was just um, was incredible. It was a dream, literal dream come true for me. We asked attendees to share a favorite Notre Dame um, basketball memory, and overwhelmingly, most people said the 2001 championship. So yeah, thank you. Um, you're at Notre Dame. You're not just a championship athlete. You're also a student. Talk to us about, you're a history major. Um, talk to us about just being a student, a student athlete at Notre Dame. Yeah, well, I luckily have, I was really close with my, um, the coaching staff here. And so I, I utilized, you know, their um, mentorship a lot. They helped me get through the times that were hard. Um, it was definitely a very challenging um, initially coming on campus, being one of the top students in my class in high school, and then coming to Notre Dame, being around, such high academic um an environment a high academic environment so i was i felt like freshman year i was going back to square one just just because it was so challenging but it definitely was um a great experience for me i was really close with my um, roommates i made um you know great friends outside of um, my bas the basketball team which was really important to me because i feel like we spend so much time in our little basketball bubble that i was um you know i was it was really important to me to try to get um, make relationships, build relationships throughout campus and in my dorm. So that was, that was really important to me. And I'm very great, grateful that I still have those relationships with uh, my roommates from college. Um, I think it was just a little bit of a note or South Bend, just a little bit of a culture shock, just being here in South Bend, um, you know, it wasn't a very diverse, um, diverse campus. But again, like I said, like I had, I had a great experience. I felt like I had all the support that I needed academically, you know, try to utilize all my resources through tutoring or, or whatever. I just felt like it was a lot of, lot of help here. Um, I developed a really great relationship with Mark Malloy. Um, I took one of his classes my freshman year. So that was, that was, um, I was very fortunate to have that relationship with him because we're still very close to this day from that class. I'm not sure if you guys has heard, have heard about the class where he teaches a class every Sunday. It's, I think it's normally second semester, maybe. He teaches a freshman, um, a freshman English course, I think. Yes. So it's like it's a special class that, um, and I was fortunate to be in that class. And I was, um, you know, really grateful to have that experience and um, have that relationship with, with Mark Malloy. 
Um, but yeah, like I, like I said, it was even th- even going through you know the things I went through was just you know basketball wise. It was it was a great experience for me. I felt like I always felt like Notre Dame was family and home, and it was just um, the best five years of my life. Yeah, thank you. Um, Monk Malloy once told me he's never taught the same book twice in that seminar. seminar. Yeah, yeah. honor that you were able to be in that class. Um, one of the women on our call, Haley Scott Di Maria, wrote a book, What Though the Odds, that has been used in his class. In fact, oh, actually, that, wow. might be, that might be the one he's used more than once. I might need to correct <laughs> myself. Yeah. Um, Coach, after graduation and, and a national championship, you go on to the WNBA for five years. Uh, what were some memories or takeaways from your time in the WNBA? Well, I there was a big dream of mine to play professionally. I thought when I was younger, you know, I thought, you know, WNBA wasn't really um, around at the time. So I was thinking maybe I'll go overseas. I really wanted to play professionally. I wanted to play at the next level. And so having the opportunity um, to be drafted and drafted for the Indiana Fever, which is down the street from South Bend, I was really happy. My my dad was um, raised in Indianapolis, so I had a lot of family, a lot of first cousins there, and so that was that was really exciting for me to felt to feel like I've I've accomplished one of my one of my biggest dreams outside of graduating from Notre Dame, getting a scholarship here, getting my degree from Notre Dame, and winning a national championship. Those were my goals prior to um, being drafted. So that was my biggest, you know, highest um, goal would to be outside of winning national championship would be to play professionally. So that part was amazing. Um, I had a really great experience with my team at with the Indiana Fever, had the opportunity to play on a couple different teams. But I think the biggest um, takeaway was, you know, that was the, I think my first year. So in 2002, I had um, my son. So that was, that kind of changed the, the my journey or just, you know, my life kind of changed after having him, but just, I just remember having him at the games and um, my motivation and my, dr- my drive changed when he, when I had him. And so I felt like my WMA experience was um, just having the, sac- you know, making the sacrifice uh, or actually not making the sacrifice, but realizing that, that V being a professional athlete was also allowing me to take care of him. And so my, my motivation changed. And so that was a, that was a positive takeaway for me though. But it was, it was great. I have, um, you know, just being a part of the WNBA, it's an amazing organization, um, very empowering for women. And um, I'm just blessed to say that I was part of it. Yeah. It's, it's so inspiring to see professional athletes. Um, you, I think of the 99ers, the women's national soccer team, there's a couple of women on that team that were moms. I think of Serena Williams. I think of you know, Yvonne Gugelong, like these are, these are women, female athletes that are showing us the example. Um, and like yourself, um, I think it's really inspiring. Thank you. Uh, you leave that, um, you return to Notre Dame in 2007 as an assistant coach. Um, and this is one of the things that notices without coaching experience. Um, what was, what were those early years like? They were, um, it was a, it was a shock for me, to be honest, because as a stu- as an athlete, you don't really realize how much time um, and work goes into being a coach. I didn't. I just felt like the coaches came when we practiced. You know, they were around maybe a couple hours, like we a couple hours, like we were, and then they went home. But when I became an assistant coach, I was like, I mean, it's a nine to five, not even nine to five. It's a three sixty five a year you know, the hours there, you can't even calculate the hours, honestly, because it's, it's so much that goes into coaching. And so my first month on the job, I called and text every one of my assistant coaches. And I just said, thank you, because I didn't know that it had, that it was, that it was that hard. And it was such a sacrifice. I didn't realize it. So it was a, it was a shock initially. And then um, just trying to find, because I felt like I was very young, very green. And Coach McGraw did a really great job of being patient she gave me the opportunity, like you said, I ne- had no prior um, coaching experience. So the fact that I had my first opportunity um, to break into the field at Notre Dame at my alma mater was such a huge blessing. And, um, but it was, I, it was something that I, that's when I kind of realized my purpose. You talked about purpose earlier. That was when I realized what my purpose was because, it's re- you know, it's hard, you know, transitioning from playing, being what I've known outside of being a student was 
you know, playing basketball. So I had to transition my life to what are you going to do after the ball stops or what are you going to do after you stop playing? And so sometimes that's a very hard transition for athletes. And so for me to have the transition to be here at Notre Dame um, in the pro with the program that has given me so much and has imp impacted my life um, so much um, was a huge blessing. So it was, it was really, um, it was, I learned a lot initially for the first couple of years. And so I, um, I really leaned on Coach McGraw to kind of show me the way. I tried to just be a sponge with her and just kind of follow, you know, ask a lot of questions. You know, I had a really strong network, a really strong um, network of mentors that I leaned on, like Kevin McGuff, head coach of Ohio State, Coquise Washington, who's a head coach, who was the head coach at Penn State, who's now back here with me, actually. Um, so I had a network of people that helped me get through the times or the to help me navigate through the things that I needed to learn being a young coach. Um, so it was a lot of work, but um, again, it was, it was part of my purpose. So I, I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you for that perspective. And what great advice for people who want to maybe be assistant coaches, mm -hmm. right? Um, as part of the process to maybe becoming a head coach. Right. Um, can you talk to us just a little, so I want to talk about the uh, Ring of Honor in, 2000, in 2016. Um, but coach, can you just talk to us about the facilities at Notre Dame now that you're in, um, before I get to that ring of honor piece, like there's new practice facilities. Um, what would people see that's different if they were on campus, allegedly? Well, I'll show you a little bit. <laughs> that's where I'm at. I don't know if you can see. Oh yeah. Yeah. So this is the, um, I felt like this would be a good backdrop for you guys. Um, but so it is um, a game changer for me, recruiting wise. Um, I'm we are so fortunate to have this great facilities here at Notre Dame. The Joy Center is an amazing arena that we play in, but this practice facility is the best in the country. I think it was it was a, um, it was a I think it cost maybe 20, 20 plus million dollars to renovate this this space. It is a um, three level, um, the um, largest um, square footage wise, the largest practice facility in the country. It's shared by both men and women's basketball. So everything on the uh, our, the women's side is mirrored on the men's side. Um, we have they have two separate spaces as far as um, two separate um, courts, and so we can practice at the same time. We share a um, weight room, um, a Gatorade refueling um, station, and the training room. And then we both have locker room, team room, film room. So, and then we have um, spaces on the third level with our coaches' offices, but. It honestly has been a complete game changer. The, the, it's been a great re recruiting tool. We have everything <laughs> imaginable that we need. It is um, in an area where um, our, our team, our girls can get better. And there is a place where they study. It's just, it's beautiful. And so we are very, very fortunate to have such a generous donation from our um, alum. We, um, Karen and Kevin Keyes, um, they donated a big portion of the of this practice facility and it's they've just been so supportive and and everyone that has um donated is we're so grateful i'm so grateful to be able to say that i can walk into this this building every every day and come to work it's such a such a beautiful space so i'm super grateful for it and it is really honestly has truly helped our team our program it's um and it's been a, a great recruiting tool awesome i'm so glad to hear that and i think it's really neat i think people should know karen keys played for Coach McGraw, and that um, your position, Coach, is the first endowed position in Notre Dame Athletics, so to a women's coaching position. I think that's um, really special. It's um, the alumni network, you know, and that's really important to me and really important to our program is, you know, you guys, all of, all of you women and a couple of the men that are on this call. It's really important, you know, that we continue, um, you know, kind of just having this, this family atmosphere and um, what you guys do for us even, you know, being away from Notre Dame, I think that's the, that's the unique piece of Notre Dame where we talk about, it's not just a four-year decision, it's a 40-year decision. Um, and, you know, we are, we are really grateful for our alumni and all your support and, you know, definitely for the keys that end up, you know, giving us this, um, helping, you know, offer the, to, to give us this um, beautiful space. So we're really appreciative. That's awesome. So when we are able to come back um, to the ACC, the JACC, we'll see your name hanging in the ring of honor. Um, your teammate, Ruth Riley, commended you on that. She said she's the heart and soul of Notre Dame basketball, in addition to Coach McGraw. She said you have a large personality for someone so small. 
which I thought was kind of funny because you're five foot seven. Um, <laughs> but, what does that award mean to you? It means, uh, it, so it's such a huge honor. It's such a huge honor to have my name in the rafters here. Not something that I ever thought coming in as a 17, 18 year old young, young girl to say that I, to have this incredible career. Um, I feel like it's almost a, a part of the legacy of excellence here, the legacy of, of powerful women here at Notre Dame and just to be a part of that, to be a part of so many, um, you know, the legends that are also in the ring of honor is just a complete honor to me. And so I was just really grateful that Coach McGraw, um, you know, thinks of me in that in high regards in that way, because this place has means everything to me. And so to be, to have my name here um, is, it means it's, it's a special, it, it, it has a special place in my heart. Awesome. Um, in 2019, you leave to join the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, talk to us about that experience in the NBA. Well, it was, um, it was a, I was really, I, I mean, just, a, I was super shocked by the, um, the email that I received for the interest of, to, to, to go to the, to be interviewed. So first I, I, I did not expect that my, to, for my career to take that path. I, I never thought of myself, uh, thought of the NBA at all. Um, to be an assistant coach. So that was just something that completely came out of, out of the blue. Um, but, you know, having a conversation with Coach McGraw after I kind of interviewed, I realized like this is, an, this is a chance of a lifetime. This is a one a lifetime, once in a lifetime opportunity. And so taking that opportunity, I was complete, it completely, you know, stretched me out of my comfort zone. I was very happy here in Notre Dame, very comfortable. Um, but, I, but I also realized I'd been in Notre Dame for 12 years and I wanted to eventually be a head coach. Didn't think it was going to be here at Notre Dame, but I eventually wanted to be a head coach. And what other better way would it be? Uh, would it be to learn from someone else, learn from a you know, go to the highest level, um, different organization, learn from a different coach, um, really stretch myself. I, I felt like it was time for me to grow, and so this was a great opportunity to do that. And it was a transformative year. It was one of the best years of my career because I learned so much in a short amount of time, and I was part of a great organization. The head coach there, Taylor Jenkins, he was an amazing boss. He really kind of took me under his wing. They, it was just, it was an amazing experience. And it, it felt like a, I, you know, had I definitely created a, a new network with the Grizzlies and the NBA, but it definitely felt like a family there. And so I was, um, I was, it was a special time last year. They're an exciting team. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, coach McGraw retires. Uh, what does that mean to you? Well, do you want to talk about me coming back or just her retirement first? Yeah, I think her retirement. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was very shocked because I, I guess when I, at the time, when I, when I think of Notre Dame women's basketball, I always have her vision um, in her face. You, you know, I just, I always felt like she was going to coach forever. They were like, when is she going to retire? I'm like, I can't see her retiring anytime soon. I'm like, oh, give her five more years. All right, five more years. Everyone who always asked me that. And so I was, I was shocked that it was, um, that she was ready to retire. I knew it was going to, it was coming at some point, but I just didn't think it was going to be right this, this past season. Um, but I was, I was happy for her because she, she was at peace, you know, have, having conversations with her. She's, she's done it all. She's won two national championships, you know, coached for 33 years, was, was a successful wife and mother. That was some a part of my relationship with her is I've always admired her and looked up to her. But I also looked up to her in many ways, but one was just to see that you, she showed me that you can do both. You can have a family, you can be successful and also have a successful career. And that was something important that I learned from her that had nothing to do with the game. And so um, I was just really happy that she was happy. You know, she's had so much time. She spent her entire life taking care of other people and, um, you know, mentoring other young, young women and, you know, mentoring adult women, you know, adult, a lot of people like she's, always, you know, she's always helping, you know, someone, she's just a giving, she has a giving spirit. And so I just felt like for her, this was her opportunity to just be able to celebrate her success and, and, and have her family and her husband and, um, you know, some take, take some time for herself to do some other things that she's passionate about. So I was really happy for her, but I was shocked. You certainly do light up when you talk about Coach McGraw. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. There's a mutuality there. Um, so like Coach McGraw, you will ha you have an all-female coaching staff, is that correct? Yes. Uh, just talk to us about your, your staff and um, 
who's part of it. Right. So Coquise Washington. So she was a, a, one of the assistant coaches here when I played here. Um, she went on to be a head coach of Penn State for 12, 12 seasons. And then, um, then she was assistant at Oklahoma. And then I brought her back here. And she is someone that is extremely bright. She, she graduated in three years here at Notre Dame. And she got her master's, um, her law doctorate here. So she's a double domer. So just extremely, extremely smart. Um, somebody that I have highly respect and was always my mentor. So I was just, I'm just lucky that she was available to come back because she's eventually going to be a head coach again. Um, um, Carol Owens, she's our, I mean, both of Carol Owens and Coquise Washington are both uh, associate head coaches. Carol Owens has been here um, for the past 20 seasons. She was a recruiting coordinator here um, and recruited me to come to Notre Dame. And so we have a great relationship, very loyal. Um, she's one of the threads also been a part of every, all, every all, all nine final fours besides myself um so she's been she knows this program um in and out and and i just was she's a post position coach she's just really great at her craft great with leadership so i was fortunate to to be able to retain her michaela mabry is a former player she graduated in 2015 her sisters both played here so marina mabry played here and we just brought in dara mabry that's um, a transfer from virginia tech so I just love her, um, her energy, her passion. She reminds me of myself because she, she, you know, she's just um, very relatable to the, to the players and she's very young. So they, um, she gets out and practices with us and just has just, um, just a heart of gold. And she, she understands this place just, just as everyone else on the staff because we've all been a part of it or, or graduated from here. But she's been an incredible addition. She's my recruiting coordinator, does a great job of, you know, organizing and recruiting and, um, she's great at player development as well. And then I have a video coordinator, James Finelli, um, Charlotte Lewis, that's been here for a couple of years, and Angie Potoff, my director of ops. And so I'm fortunate to have, um, you know, three former players, so three alum on staff. I have a staff that has, um, you know, really understands the value of Notre Dame, what Notre Dame's about. They do a great job of um, really um, representing this, our institution in, um, in a positive way. And so I'm, I'm very fortunate to have to basically working with my friends. <laughs> we, we, it's, a, it's business, but it's also great to, you know, just to have that, um, that the relationship that I have with all of them. Awesome. What a great working environment. Well, yes, we're excited have a lot of fun. <laughs> to see you all, um, you know, when we, uh, as we're able to, right. Yes. So, um, thank you. At this point, I'd like to kind of transition. Um, we've had uh, a lot of, I've seen a lot of people shaking their heads, smiling. Thank you for, um, just so many of your, stories, um, insights, coach. Um, before we transition to the Q&A from our audience here, um, we'll, we're going to do something I call rapid fire. Um, I met with coach right before and she said, oh, I love it, which doesn't surprise <laughs> me that you're just competitive and ready to go. So um, these are just quick questions. Uh, David Faraday, if anyone likes the Golf Channel, does this with his guests. So that's where I got the idea. And sometimes it's a forced choice or just a quick answer. So are you ready? Should I yes. set the time? Okay. Uh, first question, North or South Dining Hall? North. Dorm you lived in? Welsh Family. Uh, favorite snack in Welsh Family Hall? Late night snack? Popcorn. Who is more intimidating, Gino or Muffet? Muffet. Red wine or green tea? Red wine. Especially have, in quarantine. What's that? Especially in quarantine, sorry. <laughs> we get it. Um, you have all of five seconds left in the game. Who is your guard? Diana Tarazi or Arike Agumbawale? <laughs> Favorite teammate? Kelly Seaman. Minus Taylor Jenkins. Best NBA coach is? Minus Taylor Jenkins. Uh, Popovich. Greg Popovich. If you could want, change one thing about your basketball game, it would be? Um, my jumper, pull-up jumper. Most interesting person you've played basketball with? Was the most interesting person? You've played basketball with? Erica Haney. Most exciting player for you to watch? Ja Morant. I knew it. And then last <laughs> golfers do <laughs> all the time. We have ideal foursome. So who is your ideal starting five? You are the point guard. Tyler Diggins at the two, Arike at the three, 
uh, Ruth Riley at the center position and uh, fourth one, Kelly Seaman. Love it. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Awesome. All right, let's transition. I'd like to introduce Lauren Mack and Kim, Kimberly Thinkpen, Thinkpen and um, Sheila Delaney, our regional directors. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Lauren Mack and I am honored to be the Regional Director for the Northeast for Notre Dame Women Connect. I am a 98 graduate of Notre Dame and uh, spent four wonderful years in Lions Hall. So I'm very excited to have a question from Maura Boston, who's class of 2017 and uh, she is a former Kavanaugh Hall resident. And coach, she wants to know what is the most memorable interaction you had with your longtime coach and colleague, Muffet McGraw? Most memorable? Mm -hmm. Ooh, I've had so many. Um, I would say during her, when she won the, when she was honored for the Naismith Women's Basketball Hall of Fame Award, just, we had a weekend, um, it was in, I think it was in Massachusetts, and just to see her um, be honored on that stage. You know, she's somebody, as you all know, even hearing from this phone, this Zoom conversation that she means so much to me. And so just to see um, the world, the world recognize her gift and um, for her to be recognized for what she's done for the, our program and also just for women's basketball. It was, that was a very memorable moment just to be able to just to see her on that stage and accept the award and um, just to be a part of it. Cause I felt like I guess she's up there receiving the award, but just to see her blossom and just to see the world, um, you know, give her praise from and and um, show her the gratitude that she deserves to be able to be there part of that was very memorable for me. Hi, Coach Ivy. My name is Kim Big Pen, and I am honored to serve as our Notre Dame Women Connect Governance Chair. I am moving into my second year in this role. Unlike most of you guys on the call, I did not attend Notre Dame as an undergrad student, so I never had the fortune of living in any of the halls. Um, <laughs> I attended for my MBA and graduated in the year 2005. My question comes from Haley Scott DeMaria, class of 95, who lived in Lions Hall. Her question is, besides COVID, what is your biggest challenge this year? Oh, um, besides COVID, because that's my biggest challenge. Um, we have a young team, and this is going to be a very different year um, in year one as far as not having fans. And we might, our, our, our schedule has completely, <clears throat> the schedule has been completely changed. And we have, um, we don't have as many games to qualify for the NCAA tournament. And so the whole schedule is completely different. So that's going to be a challenge of just making sure that we're ready with a young, that I'm ready with a young team to be in a completely different environment with no fans. And, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully everyone stays healthy that we can actually play, but just trying to make the tournament in these circumstances, I think is going to be a big, big challenge for us with a young team. Cause I have freshmen that could potentially play a lot of minutes. So we're going to be very young um, <laughs> going into this, this season. So I think that's just going to be challenging in itself, but I'm excited for the challenge and, um, our team, you know, we're really, they're very resilient and we're, we're getting better every day and we're really working really hard. So I'm encouraged by what I see right now. So we'll see, hopefully it may right. be not as big of a challenge as I think, but we're going to, we're well, going to survive. Good luck. Go Thanks. Irish. I've been smiling through this whole interview. Jordan is my favorite, but I am a King James fan too. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, Coach. Uh, this is Sheila Delaney over in Chicago. I'm the Illinois um, Regional Director for the Notre Dame Women Connect. Uh, I studied architecture undergrad in 1999 and um, got my MBA in 2009. And wow. we have a question from um, Megan Kelly, MBA class of 2020 from uh, Welsh Family Hall. She asks, what lessons did you learn as a woman in, leadership, in a leadership role at the, in the NBA? What lessons did I learn? Can you say it again? What lessons did you learn as a woman in a leadership role in the NBA? Well, I learned a lot. Um, I learned because I was, that was the first time, you know, Coach McGraw had pretty much an all-female staff here at Notre Dame 
many of the years that I was here as an assistant. And that was the first time I've ever been in an environment where I was surrounded by all men. And so I learned a lot and a lot of it came, I, uh, what I learned I think the most was confidence, to have confidence in myself, just to watch them, um, the men on our staff and just being around so many men, just to see how confident they were, even if they weren't right. I just felt like they really, they really projected exactly what they wanted. Um, they never, they never hesitated in, in uh, any in arguments and discussions. I felt like I really found my voice by being, by seeing that and also just being in that environment. And so I would say um, I learned confidence my, during that time and, you know, realizing who I was as a woman and how my voice mattered. And they did a really good job. I was, uh, I was around a great, great men. I would say that. I, I, I don't know if that could have been in every, every situation, but in the, the Memphis Grizzlies, in that organization, you know, my head coach, he made a point to, to make sure that my voice was heard, you know, and I, it empowered me just to, to realize that, to know that, but it allowed me to really work on my confidence and work on my voice. It's something that I felt that Coach McGrath has done a really good job of in the past for me, but being in that role by myself, that was the one thing that I learned um, leadership wise is like to make sure that I'm confident and make sure that I realize that my voice matters and to, to make sure that I express what I want to say and not, you know, sit back and not, not allow my, uh, my opinion to be stated. That's awesome. The university and the students and your team is lucky to have you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm lucky. I'm just as lucky. <laughs> So coach, I have a question from CJ Ritterbush, who's a 90 um, alum. What advice do you have for young female athletes who want to play sports when they get to college? Um, my advice is just to make sure that, um, you know, they outside of, you know, having passion for whatever sport it is, but definitely in basketball to make sure that they, um, their work ethic is, is where it needs to be. Cause you, it's, it's definitely not, um, an easy, it's not easy to get to the, the college level. Um, you have to make sure that you're, um, you're in the right organization to be seen, you know, so you have to, you have to work really hard getting to, to high school and then hopefully you're on a really great team that you can be seen. Cause that's the biggest part of is getting on the, the radars of, of college, college coaches to be able to get to the next level. Um, so make sure you're passionate about what you want to do, work hard, um, and be dedicated to your craft. You really have to be dedicated to your craft to be able to get to the next level. And I think that's pretty much with, 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 any, with any profession or any sport, you have to make sure that you're dedicated um, in that sport to be able to excel and to continue getting better. And surround yourself with you know, great coaches, people that can help you and um, that can kind of um, help you navigate to figure out which channels you need to go through to try to get to that next level, I would say. That's great advice for all of us, I think. <laughs> Hi, Coach. My question is from Tom O'Donohue, class of 74, from Dylan Hall. He wants to know, what is the toughest question a recruit has asked you before deciding to join Indy? Ooh, the toughest question they've asked me. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of interesting questions. I don't know even how to answer that one because I mean some I guess it depends on each each player but maybe there's just the academic piece you know some sometimes that they're they're really um they're really concerned about like their parents they're re just they're nervous about how do you how you get to Notre Dame or or what's the right number what's the right SAT number what's the right ACT number and you know so those are kind of because it's really it's it's um Notre Dame our academic admissions office it we're different from the the rest of the institutions you know so it's not a, a certain number that you need um and now it's completely different with covid uh, but sometimes it's hard to answer that question because it's they look at a lot of different things um they look at your gpa they look at the classes that you've taken they looked at your high school and how many students from that high school has um has come to notre dame so it's sometimes it's hard just to give them an exact and some parents need the exact number that they want the exact number so um sometimes that's hard to try to try to help them in that regards, in that. Right, I understand. I think all students are worried about that score, thinking that yes. it's a silver bullet if they get the right number and there's so many other factors. Thank <laughs> right. you. 
So Peggy Ward, class of 95, uh, she's from Lewis Hall, wants to know, have you been binge watching anything during the past few months other than UConn and ACC <laughs> game tapes? <laughs> I haven't even watched UConn yet. I'm not ready for them yet. Um, well, I binge watched uh, the Ozarks in quarantine past couple months. But recently, to be honest, recently I've just been, um, you know, studying, uh, studying a lot of film, not just UConn, just kind of studying a lot of actually Grizzlies film and um, I've been watching a lot of Notre Dame women's basketball there from last season. I've watched a lot of game film with, with them just kind of getting to know the players and their tendencies and their strengths and weaknesses. So that's what I've been doing the last couple months. But before that Netflix, I've, I've, I've tried to watch a lot of different shows. Um, what was it? Tiger King. I tried one episode and I didn't finish that one. I didn't either. I, I couldn't. <laughs> I, I, just, I was so confused, but Ozarks, I made all the way through. So I have to find something, <laughs> something else. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Mike uh, Petrikowski, who is a 79 grad who lived in Howard Hall, um, wants to ask coach, what is the hardest adjustment from being an assistant coach to being the head coach? And he says, thank you and welcome home. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I think the hardest part for me is delegating because as assistant coach, I always just wanted to do it all. So whatever coach McGraw needed, I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. You know, I'll do the recruiting. I'll type up the itinerary. And so now as a head coach has been a challenging for me not to think as a, I have to think as a head coach and not want to do everything. You know, that's what you have assistance for. And I'm just used to I just have that, I'm just used to doing it all. So that has been a, a challenge uh, and I'm working on it, <laughs> of delegating. And that was something that even Jack Schwarberg is like, that's one thing you have to do. You have to learn how to let stuff go. You have your assistance for those things. So that's what I've been working on the past couple months. And then actually now I'm delegating a little bit more and I'm, I almost feel like I have a little bit more time on my hands. I'm like, oh, my assistant can do that. I don't have to call that person or, you know. So it's definitely something that I'm just, I have to get used to. Well, that's a, that is a great skill to, to work on. So good luck with that. <laughs> good luck. Exactly. <laughs> right. My question is from Christina Jodis of Farley Hall. She wants to know if it's true that your favorite player on the practice team is Jack McClintock. <laughs> I, it is her son. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> I'm going to say my favorite. He's the best. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you <laughs> our practice players are all amazing just the fact that they they sacrifice to to help our team get better and they you know they don't get a lot of the credit but they definitely help us a lot so i'm very appreciative of our practice guys okay we have a question from sheila rosler class of 83 from baden hall uh what is what what is your most humbling or surprising lesson ever and how have you responded or how did you learn or grow out of that? Ooh, that's a good question. My hum most humbling. Ooh. Um, that is a really good question. Humbling experience. I think it was very, I mean, very humbling last year, just being part of the Grizzlies because I was so used to being the player development, um, I was always the ones that were, I was always the one that was working with, um, you know, point guards and some of the best guards on the team and always kind of constructing our player, our workouts and um, practice. I was always the one for Coach McGraw telling her, hey, you know, we need to put this play in. And I was like her go-to, I guess you could say. So last year was very humbling to feel like I was, so one of her, and she never gave us, she never gave us titles as, as top assistant or anything like that because we all shared, you know, great responsibility, but I definitely feel like I was her right, her right hand. And so last year was very humbling to feel like I was at the like lowest, I was on the bottom. I was like on the, and not that I say I was on the bottom, but just, I was the most inexperienced in that staff, um, you know, coming from college, never coaching men, definitely never coaching in the NBA. So that was very humbling of being able to just all to, to sit back and learn instead of being the one that's always um, you know, be, being with the head coach and, and 
making the players, you know, creating the workouts and all that kind of stuff. That was something that I had to, I had to sit back and be like, okay, what can I learn in this moment? You know, how could I take, instead of, you know, instead of taking it um, in a negative way, which it definitely wasn't a negative way, but there's a, there's a, there's an area of growth for me, you know, by just learning and observing and, you know, asking questions and, and working my way up basically. So I had to feel like I had to start back from scratch last year. Um, mm-hmm. So that was, that was definitely humbling for me. Um, it was yeah. a little bit challenging in the beginning. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to just, instead of being frustrated by this, I'm just going to continue to learn. I'm going to continue to grow. And by, even by Christmas time, you know, I just felt like I, I blossomed even, even like four, like four, four months. And so, um, and I, and I think that's just from, instead of, and, and I, I think that was just from just, like I said, just taking it in a positive way instead of taking it in a negative, negative way, I guess. That's a good yeah. question though. Cause that hasn't, that hasn't happened too many times. Yeah. I think sometimes, um, in that experience, some people can feel uncomfortable. So it's like learning to feel comfortable when you're in an uncomfortable situation. And so That's thank exactly you for sharing that. Yes. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. That's, that was my, that's my, that was my lesson last year. Mm-hmm. And I grew from that experience as well. Cool. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thank you. Um, we have opened up the chat. If people would like to just raise some comments, we're um, about, we're about 65 minutes. We have about, you know, five, 10 more minutes with coach. Um, Karen's going to make an announcement about uh, Notre Dame Women Connect upcoming events. Um, and then we'd like to close with a prayer. Um, so if you have comments that you'd like to type in, um, I would just like to share a couple of people's favorite memories, coach, that they submitted. Um, this is and Patricia uh, Fosmo, 93 of Siegfried. She's on today. She said her, the first national championship is her favorite memory. <laughs> Um, Marco Mignano, 96, adds to that. He says, Ruth Riley singing the two clutch uh, FTs. Free throw. Duh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Thank you. Thanks for this. <laughs> to win the first national championship. Haley Scott Di Maria, 95. Watching the women's team over the years with my sons as they learn to appreciate women's sports as equal to men's. Uh, Michael um, Pulowski, 92 of Keenan, uh, love watching them compete all the time. <laughs> Aaron Sheneman, 80 of Lewis Hall and Walsh, um, being on the team in 77 to 76, which was so fun. Um, Jennifer Huber, 2008, the NCAA championship win in, can everyone know the first one was in St. Louis. Do people know where the second one was? in Columbus, Ohio. So that's <laughs> great. And then um, mine coach, I um, lived in Washington, D.C., and I happened to be on the plane with you all when you flew to the White House after the oh, national championship. Oh, so wow. In those days. And then my roommate had a big crush on Kelly. And I said to him, I said, pick me up. I'm at National Airport. So <laughs> he was here. <laughs> so, that's awesome. Thank you for those memories, people, to all of the people who submitted. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. Those yeah. are awesome memories. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just a lot of thank you. Um, it's a lot of gratitude people have been sharing. They're sending on the way. So hopefully you get a chance to read that as it comes in. Karen, will you um, yeah. turn over to you? So I'd, I'd be happy to. I uh, like Ann, uh, Coach and, and Ann. We've all been just sitting here with smiles on our faces, enjoying these stories, and uh, so grateful to have everyone join us tonight. Uh, Coach, I have to tell you, my daughter lives in Welsh Fam, so I'll have okay. to tell her to check out the popcorn and uh, and see if she can't, maybe years from now, be uh, enjoying the kind of success and telling great stories like you are. So terrific to have that. Um, I want to highlight um, Notre Dame Women Connect. We are so excited to be launching this virtual series. Uh, we can't wait to announce the next one bringing female leaders from our campus uh, to these kinds of conversations and getting into the kind of great dialogue we had with Coach tonight. In terms of what Notre Dame Women Connect means, there are several things Coach said tonight that just bring it home for me. She talked about the value of mentors. She talked about the legacy of powerful women. She talked about balancing career and family. 
She talked about finding her voice as a woman. These are just a few examples of the kinds of conversations we have at Notre Dame Women Connect. We have these conversations in our local groups. We have them at our events on campus. And it's a really great opportunity to reconnect with women you knew on campus, meet women you didn't know on campus, and just grow your circle in the Notre Dame family. So I want to encourage everyone, we will send a link uh, to everyone who registered for the call so that we can make those connections easily. And, um, and thank you very much. I will also just put in one uh, shameless plug for an event that's coming up. Um, Notre Dame Women Connect is one of several affinity groups in the Notre Dame Alumni Association. Uh, we are so proud to be partnering with all of our affinity group partners to bring a shared reading experience to the Notre Dame family. It's kicking off next week on October 4th. We're reading Black Domers. It's a, a series of essays about seven decades of Black students on campus at Notre Dame. Um, they are powerful stories. They are moving stories. They are some are challenging stories, and we hope you will join us. And again, that link we'll send out after the call. We'll include a link to the Black Domers shared reading experience and hope you'll all join us. Uh, Anne, I think it's back to you. Great. Great. Thank you, Karen. Thank you for your leadership of this group. Um, we have a couple of thank yous um, this evening. We would be remiss if we didn't thank Heather McLean and Angeline Daly Johnson. Thank you. They are in the Notre Dame Alumni Association. None of this is possible without both Heather and Angeline's support. We're so grateful to you both. Um, thank you, Sarah Liebscher, class of 91, for the assist to Coach Ivy. Um, really appreciate her friendship and support of Notre Dame Women Connect. Um, and then obviously, Coach, thank you to you. Thank you for saying yes. Um, thank you for your time. Um, as a thank you, we have two gifts. Um, this was mentioned in the uh, rapid fire round. We have a nice bottle of red wine and we have a tub of white cheddar popcorn. That will be oh, yes, two of my favorites. That's gonna get me through the season. Thank you. Yeah, we did some sleuthing around. So thank you. Those will be on your desk in the next few days. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and if we can um, conclude with a prayer. Um, for your prayer, hopefully we do have fans. If we do have fans this year, next year, I think it would be awesome to have everybody on this call to try to figure out some tickets for everybody. If we could figure <laughs> it out at some point, maybe next year, we'll get the Indie Women's Connect. We'll have a, a little section. That would be awesome. You just launched yes. an idea for a future event, Coach. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need all the support I can get. Thank you. Yeah, well, we'll pray for uh, we'll pray for that. So we'll just bow our head and ask for God's blessing. In a special way today, I'd like to pray for Coach Ivy. I'd like to pray for your brother. I didn't know um, that you lost a brother. So for your siblings, your parents, anyone who's lost a sibling um, in a tragic way, um, we'll remember him in our prayer. And we pray for your t your your co your colleagues, your coaches, um, and your athletes. Pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is a prayer for coaches. Lord, lay down your path between the lines of battle where many leaders before me have walked. Lay down your path so I may tread in the footsteps of the wise, courageous, the faithful. Lay down your path so these spirited athletes know the prospect of laying down and can see the glory in their gifts and talents. When the contest approaches in this game we love becomes a way of life, give me the strength to lead with a narrowing focus. Let us be a team prepared. Let us bless our leaders. Let us take each step as we can. In your name we pray. Amen. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for being our first and our best, probably. Thank you for the inspiration. Honestly, like I said, at a time like this, it is really a gift. Thank so you. thanks for your time. This is and amazing. we look forward to our future event at your, <laughs> our Notre Dame Women Connect yeah. event. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Great night. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.